market there. As you may know, there are, well, basically three different kinds of socialism. There's the authoritarian socialism that we saw in the USSR, in the German Democratic Republic, and the People's Republic of China, and so on and so forth. And, of course, the 20th century has really seen the fall of all these uh, forms of authoritarian socialism and they were associated with a great deal of human tragedy as well, famines, uh, gulags, uh, intensive uh, police states, incredibly oppressive. And I think we're at the point now where, where uh, the world is, is slowly uh, coming, uh, becoming conscious of, of the failures of authoritarian socialism. Um, I mean, we're still seeing it in Venezuela and, and South America. Um, and authoritarian socialism, socialism really was uh, a reaction to um, great poverty and suffering uh, in general in the, in the populations concerned. Uh, and, it, and typically it's come from uh, violent uh, revolutionary activity, although it's a little less true uh, in South America. Uh, a lot of the authoritarian socialism there uh, has come as a result of democratic socialism, which is what I'd like to talk about in this program. I would also like to quickly remind people of the failings of uh, libertarian socialism uh, or utilitarian socialism, uh, which is also uh, sort of true communism, uh, stateless society, uh, classless society and a moneyless society. Uh, this, those experiments were tried first in the socialist history in the 1820s in the USA. Uh, there were various um, of these uh, utopian socialist communities set up and they all imploded uh, because their uh, decision making was uh, quite impossible without private property uh, and with divided opinions um, on how things should be done. And I made a program about this uh, which you can uh, uh, watch, I'll put a link below. Um, so really the, the, the two greatest experiments in socialism, um, the authoritarian socialism or revolutionary communist uh, flavour uh, is an epic fail and the util utilitarian socialism, I mean that, that they only lasted a year or two so I mean they're epic fails as well. So that kind of leaves us with democratic socialism um, and this is, this is uh, kind of all the rage in the USA now with Bernie Sanders and uh, pushing that as, as his platform and sort of looking at the Scandinavian countries uh, and it, this really is uh, quite outrageous um, the thing with socialists is that uh, socialism really is a sort of uh, religion it, it's a secular religion um, where the church is, is replaced by the state and uh, the, the God is replaced by bureaucrats um, who somehow are supposed to know how to manage all our lives how to manage production and distribution um, and there really is nobody that can, can manage those things uh, centrally from the top um, it, it's a task to be done uh, more locally and uh, social democracy arose primarily because uh, socialists um, in more capitalistic uh, societies in the West and Britain is an example of this uh, the socialists realised that there wasn't going to be a revolution. Um, in fact, the, the early idea that Marx had um, that the, the more advanced capitalist societies would, would be where revolution would happen and socialism would, would evolve, um, it, that prediction was wrong. Uh, it, it's actually the very poor agrarian societies um, that got themselves into revolutionary socialism first. And the workers in the West were kind of comfortable and be were beginning to experience the material benefits that capitalism was bringing them uh, with medicine, uh, with consumer goods and, and many other things that made life uh, a lot more uh, safer and uh, a lot more fun. Um, so they couldn't, they couldn't really push the uh, revolutionary agenda effectively in the UK. So what they did is they tried to instill themselves, and they did very successfully, into the democratic process um, and push for uh, nationalisation and, and welfareism. Um, and in the UK, particularly in the 70s, uh, there was the Labour government and they nationalised 
Uh, for example, the railways, they nationalised some of the car plants, uh, they nationalised the electricity distribution. And it really was a disaster. And if you, like me, are old enough to remember the 70s, it was really problematic. Uh, there were power cuts. Um, I remember quite a lot of the, the uh, unhappiness about uh, car manufacturing because my parents I used to go with my parents when they bought cars. And you know, the UK used to produce um, some of the best cars in the world. It had a great reputation for quality manufacturing and innovation. Um, but after the nationalisation of production, uh, the, the cars um, weren't so good. Uh, quite often they'd be delivered and they'd have 10, 15 different technical faults with them. Uh, which led to a very bad uh, customer experience uh, and also they weren't as productive so the government was, was basically subsidising the taxpayers' money to uh, produce these cars um, that weren't very good um, and what that meant of course is really unfair because people who didn't want to buy cars or couldn't afford them uh, were basically subsidising the purchase uh, for those people who did want cars and could afford them um, so totally unfair um, but of course what it does is it, it gives the um, unions, and this is who it's all for, it gives, it gives the workers uh, a lot of power. And basically they were using this power to exhort, extort money from the state and, and then of course the state gets money from, from borrowing and from taxpayers and, and inflation. Um, so it's all robbery from the future and, and from children. Um, and it produces these, these gammy product, products. And uh, my parents uh, turned to purchasing uh, cars from Japan even though um, Japanese imports had, had heavy uh, were subject to heavy tariffs um, it was still worth having a, a good quality reliable car rather than you know having to face the consequences of, of making a poor and un unreliable car purchase um, you know breaking down and, and not getting to work on time and so on and so forth um, so that was the experiment with, with, with uh, Britain's democratic socialism in the 70s. Uh, lots of power cuts and uh, crappy cars, strikes all over the place as workers try to extort more and more money uh, out of the taxpayer. Um, so it, it's really bizarre that people uh, still keep going on believing in socialism after like every flavour of it is a failure. Um, but I don't suppose it's going to stop. It, it's people who uh, will not look at empirical evidence and are, are able to sustain a, an ongoing state of denial uh, because they're so strongly attached to this, this uh, fantasy outcome that they think they're going to get uh, with their sort of pseudo-religion. Uh, so anyway, please spread uh, this around. Uh, you know, you, you're going to be seeing things about democratic socialism and, and Bernie Sanders and all of that. Um, and uh, yes, uh, do tell me about um, Sweden's socialism. Uh, I've already got a response for that. Uh, you can go and look at that below. Sweden's never been socialist. And in fact, democratic socialism isn't truly socialism. Uh, it typically involves some of the manufacturing sector being privately owned. Um, so it, it, capitalism hasn't been abolished. And that, that really is a prerequisite for any kind of true socialism. Uh, so even the whole ideology is being floated uh, on the platform of a lie. Um, so thanks for listening and goodbye.